Hey everyone, and welcome to Mystic Musings. Sorry for a belated Friday video, but better late than never. So, with this week coming, we have Christmas. Whether you celebrate it or not, it is still a date marked on the calendar, and I thought that it would be an appropriate time to talk about some horrible murders that have occurred throughout history, much like we did in October, talking about Halloween murders. So I thought that we would do a five video today. Uh, so here are five Christmas murders. Number one, Christmas Day, 2014. Police were called to a home in Atlanta for a murder-suicide. Officers responded to a call of a person shot on the 900 block of Mason Turner Road in Atlanta, 4 a.m. on Christmas Day. The couple killed was identified as Charles Love, 59, and Florence Love, 55. Charles Love had called his brother and a neighbor and made statements about the death of Florence. When police arrived, they found the woman had been stabbed. They also found that the man had died after shooting himself in the head. Number two, the Covina Massacre. In 2008 in Covina, a city in the suburbs of Los Angeles, California, nine people were killed from gunshot wounds or arson fire inside a house in East Nolcrest Drive where a Christmas party was being held. 45-year-old Bruce Jeffrey Pardo had entered a house wearing a Santa suit and committed suicide, dying from a gunshot wound to the head at his brother's residence in the early morning hours after the attack. Authorities cited marital problems as motive for the murders. Reports indicate that his divorce had been finalized December 18th, one week prior to the massacre. Three people, including Pardo's ex-wife and his ex-in-laws, were declared missing before their bodies were discovered. He had shown up at a Christmas party dressed as Santa Claus and, with 25 people in attendance, came with a gift-wrapped package in one hand and a 9mm semi-automatic handgun in the other. He also had three additional 9mm semi-automatic handguns in his possession. When the door opened to welcome him in, he fired the handgun at the eight-year-old daughter of Letisa Yusupolovsky, a sister of Sylvia Pardo, as she ran to greet him, injuring her in the face. He then fired indiscriminately at all the other partygoers. He might have stood over and pointedly executed some of the victims, but for the most part, the shots were random. Number three, the murder of the Lawson family. On Christmas Day, 1929, Charlie Lawson murdered his wife and six of his seven children. Shortly before Christmas, Charlie had taken his wife and their seven children into town to buy new clothes and have a family portrait taken. This would have been a somewhat uncommon occurrence for a working-class rural family, so it is speculated that the murders were premeditated. On the afternoon of December 25th, Lawson first shot his daughters, Carrie and Mabel, as they were sitting out to their uncle and aunt's house. He waited for them by the tobacco barn, and when they were in range, he shot them with a shotgun. Then, not wanting to miss an opportunity, he made sure they were dead by bludgeoning them. He then placed their bodies in the barn. Afterwards, he returned to the house and shot Fanny, who was on the porch. As soon as the gun was fired, Marie, one of the children who was inside, screamed, alerting two of the younger boys, and they tried to find a hiding place. Lawson shot that daughter and found the two boys. Lastly, he killed his youngest, Mary Lou, who, at the time, was only four months old. She was bludgeoned to death. After the murders, not being able to live with what he had done, he went into the woods and shot himself. The only survivor was his 16-year-old son, Arthur, whom he had sent on an errand just before committing the crime. 
When the family was found, their arms were crossed and rocks had been placed under their heads. The gunshot that had signaled Charlie Lawson's own suicide was heard by the many people who had already learned of the murders. A police officer who was with Arthur Lawson, the one survivor, ran to discover Charlie's body, along with letters he had written to his parents. Footprints were surrounding the tree, and it is assumed he had been pacing before taking his own life. Number four. The Santa Claus murders. Though this murder did not happen on Christmas Day, I feel it still belongs on the list, mainly because it happened in a town named after jolly old Saint Nick. The Daniels family lived on Dasher Street in a one-story red brick house with a huge oblong chimney protruding from the front, nestled at the end of a cul-de-sac, just down the road from the town of Santa Claus. The small town only had about 300 residents and is about 70 miles west of Savannah, Georgia. At the edge of town there is a sign that reads, the city that loves children. Around four o'clock in the morning on December 3rd, 1997, a farmer and his wife were awakened when their dog would not stop barking. They looked out the window and saw three children walking down the road in their pajamas. Obviously alarmed, they called police who arrived within minutes. The three children ranged from ages eight to 10 were shivering and afraid on the side of the road. They said they had been taken from their Santa Claus home earlier that morning and that the oldest girl had been raped and sodomized. When police went to their home, they discovered 43-year-old Danny Daniels laying sprawled beside his 33-year-old wife. They were both covered in blood. The heavy caliber murder weapon had clearly done its work with a shattering effect. Down the hall, police found Jessica, a 16-year-old adopted daughter, was stretched out on the extensively blood-stained hallway carpet shot at close range. Further into the home, police found eight-year-old Bryant, the natural son of Daniel from a previous marriage. He had been sleeping with his teddy bear in his bedroom when someone shot him in the face. Huddled in a closet, they found Corey, age four, and Gabe, age ten, hiding from the terror that had entered their home. Thankfully, police did find the culprit, and he was brought to justice. Number five. December 25th, 1901, John Bell, a man living in Brooklyn, had been married to his wife Margaret for 15 years. Margaret returned from a trip to Scotland to inform her husband that she was pregnant. Although he had no evidence of her cheating, he suspected the baby probably did not belong to him. For weeks, he bullied her, abused her, and instead of getting in the Christmas mood, he got very, very angry. She grew sick of his attitude and told him that he was being insane. At last, he confronted her in the basement of their home with a revolver. He had planned to kill her and then himself. In desperation, she leaped at him and they struggled for the weapon. He wrenched away and shot her in the left eye. After he had murdered his wife, he changed his mind about the proposed suicide, went outside, found a policeman, and confessed to murdering his wife. 